So here's something you never thought would be in the job description of a worship leader, keeping the stage clean and tidy. But as we like to say around here, it's one of those extra things that comes along with leading a worship ministry. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my tips for creating a stage that looks clean and why it even matters in the first place. I am a stickler for a clean stage because I think it matters. When you invite people over to your house, you pick things up, you make it look presentable. It's clean and it's tidy. And you do this because you wanna put your best foot forward. We do all of this in the name of hospitality. So why wouldn't we do this in the church? Also, the more things on stage, the more that it creates like this virtual noise, if that makes sense. If there's all these things to look at on the stage, it can be distracting. So I try to make sure that the only things on stage have a very clear, very intentional, very specific purpose. And a clean stage communicates that you care. It communicates to the congregation that this time that we have carved out together on a Sunday morning is meaningful, that it's special. And it communicates to the people on your finance team that when they're signing off on the things that you're asking for that you can be trusted with, it, that you're gonna care for it, these things that have been entrusted with you, that whole faithful with little, faithful with much thing. And all of these tips are easy to do and easy to maintain, and many of them are free or very cheap solutions. So let's start with the personal mixers. One of the things that's really great about technology now is that it's really, all things considered, pretty inexpensive to get personal in-ear monitor mixes for everyone in your band. And they have those little mixers that they can put right next to them and they don't have to communicate with the person at front of house. They can just dial in their mix and it's right there in front of them. The problem becomes is that we tend to put those mixers maybe on a mic stand and now they're kind of floating like three feet in the air and your stage has this forest of personal mixers all the way across it. And so instead of seeing the design aesthetic that you might have as part of your backdrop, you see this forest of mixers that are just lining up the back end of your stage. And I know that we like to have our mix right there, so if we wanna make a change, we can do it really super fast. But I have two things to say about that. One is I would argue you don't need that close of a, a control of your mix. Sometimes I think we we get too caught up in what our inner mix sounds like and we kind of stop focusing on what we're actually supposed to be doing, which is leading worship. We're sitting there fiddling with our mix throughout the set. If the mixer's not right in front of you, I think you'll actually realize that your mixes, you can work with the mix that you have and it's not something that you have to mess with all the time. And the second thing I'd say is just put the mixer on the floor. If the mixer is just right down here next to the individual, if they need to lean over and make a change, you can do that. But what you've now done is instead of it being this floating thing that people can see, now it's down here and it's not visually a part of what's going on. Instead of seeing the sea of mixers, you see this. And that's something you can do for free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a matter of moving some equipment around. Here's something else that you can do that cleans up the stage that doesn't cost a penny. I've watched live streams before where the pastor is up giving the message, communicating the word, and there is in the backdrop, all behind them, all of these guitars. And I get it, the band's gonna come back out afterwards. They're not done with the set. There's gonna be a response song at the end of the service. But my question is, why are those guitars there? Why can't they just take the guitars with them? When they leave the stage, take the guitar with you. Yes, when you come back on stage, it's going to take about 10 or 15 seconds to connect that all back up, but I think that what you gain is not, you don't see all these guitars, especially in a live stream, you, it, it just it helps people to remove the visual clutter and they can focus on just what they need to focus on, which is the person that is communicating the message. So this is something that I do, and we don't even have a backstage area where I can take my guitar with, but when we're done with the set, I will take my acoustic with me and I will place it right behind the piano that's way off to the stage. So it's still visible, but it's way off to the side and it's not right in the center of where everyone is looking. Now let's talk about cables 
and removing the clutter of cables. I've seen a lot of churches that have these little pockets on the floor where you, when you lift up the door, there is a couple of XLR connectors and you can, instead of running all your cables through something in the back, you can, you know, if you've got a microphone that's towards the front of the stage, you can plug that in at a pocket that's really close to that. Now, when I see these pockets, a lot of them already have uh, a couple of connectors inside of them, and then those go straight to your sound console. But instead of there being uh, actual connectors in that box, if you can uh, manage it, I'd actually say make that a hole, make that a door that can open up to just the bottom part of your stage, and now you're not limited to whatever connectors or wherever they happen to come up on your soundboard. You can just run the cables underneath. You still get the advantage of not having to run all these cables on your stage. You can run them underneath your stage, but you get the benefit of just routing anything where you need to have a couple of pockets some in the front uh, where you can put cables into and then a couple of pockets in the back part of the stage where they can come out kind of out of sight and those can go to your snake head or wherever they need to plug in. Something else you can do is invest in the technology of wireless microphones and wireless in-ears. Now I know that wireless especially when it's done well and it's done reliably uh, is really really expensive and so Everyone in the band doesn't have to be wireless. Your drummer is just sitting there. He's not going anywhere, so him being wired in is just fine. Even your guitar players, they already have a cable coming out of their instrument. What's one more cable? Your keyboard player, the same thing. They're not going anywhere. But maybe, like in our situation, our center positions where we have our singers that are right in the front and right in the center of the stage, we have a wireless microphone for them, uh, a wireless in-ear pack, and then for my acoustic, there is also a pack that makes the acoustic wireless as well. So everything that's front and center is wireless where we can come up with you know what we need and, and use that for the worship set and then when we're done it leaves with us which leaves this big open space for the person communicating the message so when we need it it's there and when we don't need it it can disappear something else you can invest in that is uh, reasonably inexpensive is cable runners these are the things that you might see like in in offices where you're running a lot of you know, internet cables or electrical cables around offices and you don't want people to trip. You can get these covers that can you know, line over where your cable runs are. And one, it helps to reduce the tripping hazard that people aren't tripping over your cables. But two, it keeps it all kind of nice and tidy where it's all in one spot. And if your stage is not burnt red, um, they actually blend in really, really well. But even, even with this stage, having the cable runners in various places, it does clean things up quite a bit. It's worth the investment. So what are some of the ways that you have found to create a clean stage that I haven't mentioned yet? Put those thoughts in the comments down below and let's keep the conversation going on down there.